Hello, my name is Pim de Haan and I will present our paper Causal Confusion in Imitation Learning, which is joint work with Dinesh Jajaraman and Sergey Levin. We are looking at behavioral cloning, a very successful method of imitation learning. It uses a data set of demonstrations containing expert observations and expert actions and learns a model, such as a neural network, to clone those actions. Behavioral cloning reduces imitation learning to supervised learning, but the states in the experts' demonstrations are different from the states we encounter when we run our imperfect imitator, thus we have a distributional shift. The question we ask in the paper is this, if you provide more information to the learner, does it always improve? In supervised learning, this is generally the case. But what happens on the distributional shift? Consider a motivating example. We perform behavioral cloning to learn to drive a car in two scenarios. Here we see task A. The input is an image of the windshield and the dashboard, with an indicator that says whether we are currently braking. In task B, on the right, the dashboard is blacked out. Both cloned policies achieve low training losses. But what happens when we test these on the road? It turns out that model B learns well, but model A wrongly learns that it must apply the brake whenever it sees the brake indicator on, even though the brake light is the effect of braking, not the cause. So we have a very surprising result, that more information leads to worse generalization on the distributional shift. We call this causal confusion. The reason this happened is because the imitator used the wrong causal model of the world. Simplified, we have two random variables, the road view and the brake indicator, and want to predict the next expert's action. We know the expert only considers the road view. This is the only cause. The brake indicator is ignored by the expert and is a nuisance variable. However, the past state and action are a confounder, making the brake indicator still correlated with the next expert's action. Now if we learn an imitator, we can learn one with a causal graph that just uses the true cause, corresponding to task B. Or we learn with a graph that wrongly treats both variables as a cause, corresponding to task A. Or with a graph that ignores the tr true cause altogether. In general, if we have n state variables, we have two to the n possible causal graphs, one of which reflects the true causes the expert pays attention to. We are going to demonstrate causal confusion in a simplified setup by adding information to the original state the expert observed to make a confounded state. The information we add is the past action. We have mountain car, which, is a two which has a two-dimensional state and to which we concatenate the integer representing the past action. Thus we have three state dimensions and two to the three is eight possible causal graphs. On the other hand, we have Mujoko Hopper having 11 original state dimensions to which we concatenate the three action dimensions of the previous time step. Thus we have 2 to the 14 possible causal graphs. Additionally, we test on the benchmark with a visual state. On three games of the Atari simulator, we add a nuisance variable by simply drawing the past action as a digit onto the frame. Then we use a trained VAE to represent the state as 30 independent random variables, each serving as a potential cause. We train a behavioral cloning agent on the original state of these environments, as well as on the modified confounded state. We then execute the agents in the environment and collect rewards. We are interested in the low data regime, so the x-axis indicates the number of samples used for behavioral cloning. We see that the original state in blue quickly gets expert-like rewards. However, the confounded state in orange which has access to more information, performs significantly worse. So causal confusion is clearly present. So how might we find the true graph out of all possible graphs? We do this in two phases. 
First, we learn an optimal policy for each causal graph. Then we perform targeted intervention to find the best causal graph by interacting with the environment. We do this in two ways. Either we collect rewards from policy execution or we check agreement with expert queries. We model a causal graph as a binary vector with a one indicating the variable is a cause and a zero indicating the variable should be ignored. The binary vector acts as a mask to remove nuisance information. We learn a policy for all two to the n graphs, but parameterize these with a single neural network. During training, we uniformly sample a graph, which acts as a mask on the input variables. The graph is additionally concatenated to the masked input. Then the neural network predicts the action and is trained with a supervised learning loss. To perform targeted intervention using policy execution, we do the following. First, we initialize a distribution over graphs, for which we use a simple linear energy-based model. Then for each step, we sample a graph from the distribution, we execute the graph in the environment and collect a reward. Then we add the graph and reward to a data set and update the distribution over graphs so that graphs that get a high reward become more likely. And we repeat. So how well does our procedure perform for varying number of interventions? The upper bound is the solid purple line, which is the result of behavioral cloning on the original state. The lower bound in solid brown is the performance of behavioral cloning on the confounded state. The dashed lines are trained on VAE encoded states, which are noticed to be a bit worse than without VAE. The orange line is our model after intervention through policy execution, which observes the confounded state but performs close to the original state. We thus successfully learn to ignore the nuisance variables. Also, we consistently outperform the baseline in dashed teal. We can visualize a causal graph in the following way. We encode an Atari Pong state with a VAE and resample from the prior all latent dimensions corresponding to a nuisance variable. Then we decode the latent into an image. For a random graph on top, we see that all aspects of the state can vary. On the bottom, we show a learned graph with the nuisance variables resampled. We see that only the nuisance digit is affected, while the causal variables, the ball and pedals, remain the same. This indicates a good causal graph is learned by intervention. We address causal confusion. Access to more information leads to worse generalization under distributional shift. Thank you for watching this video.